again on a Thursday evening to Sheffield Live TV, our live show. I did promise you it would be an all owls show this week. I'm as good as my word, but uh, that relies on guests, the right guests coming in. And I think we've got two of the best uh, this evening and uh, they'll be able to discuss all things Sheffield Wednesday in the next hour or so up to around three minutes to eight o'clock. We have Nancy Frostick. Uh, and many of you will be aware that uh, she is the Owls writer for the newly formed subscription website, which is doing very well, The Athletic UK. Welcome, Nancy, for your debut. And a debut also for Tommy Spur, who will be remembered with uh, great affection by the Blue and White half of Sheffield. Former Sheffield Wednesday player for, oh, what was it, six years, moved on to Doncaster Rovers, Blackburn Rovers and Preston North End. Sadly, now retired at the ripe old age of just 32, which are commiserations uh, for that, uh, Tommy. Welcome to the studio and it's good of you to travel all the way over from uh, deepest Lancashire to join us as well. No, not a problem. I'm glad to be here to talk about anything Sheffield Wednesday. And anything football, because that's what you do these days. Yeah. Since um, you retired, you, you, you Ex-players are taking over the uh, <laughs> the press box. Watch out, Nancy. <laughs> no, it's nice. Um, I think trying to get as many sort of co-commentary um, games as I can, and Radio Lancashire in particular have been been really good with us and give us the opportunity to to kind of get as much experience as I can. I'm told you're very good at it, by the way. That makes us sick, doesn't it? These players <laughs> yeah, cropping up. Nancy, uh, you're adjusting to life in a new way before we talk to Tommy. And by the way, there'll be a video of a certain goal later. <laughs> Nancy, how are, you, how are you adjusting? Having done some time, or well, I use that word advisedly, done some time, it wasn't quite as bad as that, on the Sheffield Star. You're now with the Athletic and you can, you can, you can write for Africa. For, yeah, for it's great. Yeah, there's you know no limit on how long we can waffle on about something Wednesday related, which I suppose goes over quite well with the fans. I hope as long as it's interesting. So um, yeah, it's great. It's um, it's something a bit different, and hopefully gives us a bit more insight in a different way than what's already out there. Um, and it yeah just offers something a bit different to I guess what other outlets do. So. Well, we'll talk about your views, but right. both of you, on the, the way that Sheffield Wednesday is shaping up for the season, possible uh, comeback for uh, Fernando for Forestieri uh, in the game at Cardiff uh, this Friday. But in the meantime, um, Tommy, the jolt to your life uh, and how it how it came about that you you know you're having to do something that I suppose even a year ago would have been unthinkable, give up the game. Yeah, I mean. I think my game time at Preston was going to be quite limited uh, going into the last year of my contract and Alex Neal, the manager there, was, was brilliant with me. Um, basically told me the situation and said I'd be more of a bit part player and knew kind of how much I wanted to play. So he said basically he'll, he'll give me the opportunity to, to go out on loan and, and try and play some games and for, for the year after I'd be in a good position sort of to try and find a new club. Um, so went on loan to Fleetwood and unfortunately didn't quite work out <laughs> the way that I wanted to. No, it was a hip, wasn't it? A hip injury that, uh, that did for you in the end. Maybe a choice from the chat we had pre-programme of uh, getting a, two or three more years in as a player versus the rest of your life with a, well, with, with a family. Yeah, um, I think it was a game against Barnsley in September sort of last year. Um, stupidly go flying into a tackle and originally thought I'd just pull my groin um, but scans came back and said it was like my hip cartilage um, and then a couple of oper operations later the surgeon said basically it's irreparable so um, to get me out of pain and basically make later life a little bit more comfortable and be able to do things like play with my little boy and play football with him um, the best thing to do would be to replace the hip, so that's, that's, that's what happened. What's happened, yeah, a hip replacement at that age. I mean, he's 11 months old, isn't he? So he he's is. going he's gonna to keep you on your toes <laughs> one does. way or the other. You say you went stupidly flying into a tackle, but uh, even though you're sitting here, I would be saying this even if you weren't, you were one of the most committed players that I saw 
you know, at uh, Sheffield Wednesday, 100% committed, strong on that on that left hand side. And I, I honestly think that's why, you know, apart from being a good player, that you're remembered with a lot of affection. Do you, do you, do you actually feel that connection? I know you've come onto Twitter, <laughs> so you're probably getting some good vibes from Wednesday fans at the moment. Uh, yeah, um, surprisingly, um, like I say, I'm new to the whole Twitter thing, so um, it's been nice to to have some of the comments and it's not always like that you know <laughs> no so that's so people were telling me um but no that's going back to sort of playing and being committed and that's kind of what i strided to be like um i figured what what i didn't have in certain areas i'd make up with sort of work rate and and sort of a, a passion of, of playing football which is ultimately what i enjoyed doing and, and you were there at a difficult time as well really it was not the most successful time it was mostly struggling to hold on in <laughs> the championship wasn't it after after getting there that you you went through yeah i think i think in the time that i was there, i think we stayed up twice on on the last day and eventually on the last day we ended up getting relegated against crystal palace mm. um which obviously was massively disappointing but no I, I loved my time at Sheffield Wednesday and we're disappointed really with how how it sort of ended and but obviously looking back in hindsight it's a, a great thing it probably did my career in the long run sort of a good a good thing um going to somewhere new and sort of developing under a different manager and, and, and new surroundings which sometimes can can do you the world of good yeah I mean you played under Paul Starrett you played on, under Brian Laws there at Hillsborough, mm -hmm. didn't you? Was there anybody else? Alan yeah. Irving. Alan Irving, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we'll talk about your Sheffield Wednesday highlights, the rest of your career, and also what you're doing now in terms of the media, and I think a sports science degree uh, as well as we go on. Sheffield Wednesday in action this weekend at uh, Cardiff. I presume you'll be there, Nancy. Yes, I will, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow night, yeah. And you've been to see Gary Monk today, because you're uh, all yesterday, was yesterday. it? Yesterday, yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, sort of what were the highlights from that and how do you see this fixture? Um, I think I guess the key thing is um, the squad's looking in a good shape after the international break um, it sounds like they've been putting in a, a lot of good work on the training ground and um, I know before the break um, Gary had spoken about kind of wanting to get some of his key ideas in place he, I think he said he's got seven sort of fundamental things that he likes to work on um, and having not had pre-season he'd got three of them in in that short space of time before uh, right. once he got in sorry and then he wants to get another three in over the break it's very methodical so, man has mm. he specified what these particular things are um i think it is a case of some some real fundamentals in terms of um off the top of my head it was um counter-attacks um defensive shape to to prevent ca being counter-attacked um but then also working on how to create their own um counter-attacks um movement as a unit that sort of thing um i know a lot of the players had, had spoken about playing positionally and knowing their roles almost as positions so people are interchangeable a lot a lot more easily if they get subbed off and things mm. like that so it um, seems to go into a lot more detail than some managers let, let, mm. let's put it like that and have you got an opinion on him i know that you didn't overlap when he he had that brief time at sheffield went mm -hmm. in 2002 i think it was that was before you came onto the first team team what, what's your impressions of uh, gary i've been really impressed with with the jobs that he's he's been in previously i think particularly sort of in the championship i think he did a good job at leeds um I know Wednesday fans won't, won't like that, but it's a fact. I think yeah. um, he sort of got that belief going at Leeds that they could could sort of get promotion, and I think um, obviously the manager now has taken that on. And I think under difficult circumstances at Birmingham, he's he's done a good job. And I know they got the points deduction last year, but if it weren't for that, I think they'd have been in and around the playoff sort of push as well. So for me, it's a it's a really good appointment. You were hesitant about talking about Leeds, but you were born there. Am I allowed to mention that? Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> you were. Yeah. It's nothing to be ashamed no, of. No, it's not at all. I'm proud that I'm. I grew Did, up in Leeds. It and you and you you, you know, you grew up supporting your hometown team. You got to anybody would. So you're Leeds, you were a Leeds United supporter, yeah? No, it was. Um, I think when I was really young, sort of, my dad took me to to Ellen Road. But it was um, when you're that young, you don't really remember, like what went on um, so that was punishment <laughs> yeah. um but then once i joined sheffield wednesday academy we got sort of uh, free tickets age? um 
I think I joined properly. I started training when I was eight, but joined signed forms when I was 10. Oh, that's very young. Um, yeah. So we got tickets to, to Sheffield Wednesday games, and at that point they were in the Premier League, and you kind of fall in love with it all at that age, that you're at this massive stadium and watching Premier League football, it, it was You're off brilliant. the book, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so you grew up gen gen genuinely as a, as a Sheffield Wednesday fan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Leeds born, matters not. I was looking at that thinking, I've got to ask you about that. <laughs> My dad might not so, be too happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he, he still goes to games. You still look out for Wednesday results and performances. I suppose now you'll be able to do that a lot more than you did when you were playing. But you'll have had a few games against the Owls over, over, over the recent years, weren't you? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I always got asked, oh, would you celebrate if you... Scored against Sheffield Wednesday. I think um, you've never had to uh, decide. No, I nearly did, um, but I managed to miss it a shot, and Jordan Rhodes put it in when I were at Blackburn. So <laughs> I should have scored, but Jordan ended up finishing it for me. Was so. that a feeling of relief about that? Was there? Right? No, nah, I think I'd have quite enjoyed it to be why honest. <laughs> why on earth would you not celebrate? I can't. I can't understand. No, that. me neither. Um, you're, I, you're paid by Blackburn Rovers. Exactly. You're scoring yeah. a goal for Blackburn Rovers. Why would you not celebrate it? I, I always wonder that when people don't celebrate. I think, well, you're at a new club now, and I think, why would you not? Yeah. Talk about Jordan Rose in a minute as well, um, because you played in the same team as at Blackburn, and he was a prolific goal scorer. Mm -hmm. It's not happening for him at the moment, sadly. Uh, but I suppose the big talking point, Nancy, immediately, um, I'm not sure if he'll be involved immediately this weekend, not starting. Fernando Forestieri mm -hmm. is available again following the six-match ban. Um, we won't go into that because it's a bit complex, but he is available again. And uh, Gary Monk would appear to be sending signals to Fernando that I want you at your peak, back to your peak and in the team. Yeah, I mean, those were the exact words he used almost in his press oh. conference. You know, it sounds like he's told Fernando, I want you back at your best. And um, they've had a programme in place whilst he's been off um, to work on his, his strength and conditioning. And I think he's been doing a few technical bits as well with the ball. And I guess to get him in the best possible shape for, for when he is reintroduced into the team, whether that's straight in or, or off the bench. But do, you, do you think from the bench most likely to start with? I think so, just because of kind of the strong position that the team's been in coming into mm. the break. Um, it, he'll definitely add something as well, you know, at, the best, at his best, you know, he's, he's completely unplayable. So if they're struggling tomorrow night for some reason, bringing him off the bench is a wonderful thing to have um, at their disposal. So. Indeed, if you just get a burst, you know, a, a good three-quarter season out of Fernando Forestieri can make a huge difference. You were nodding to what Nancy was saying there. Yeah, he's obviously a talented, talented player and I think if, if Gary Monk's got him to, got him to use then it'd be silly not to involve him because, like I said, he's, he's been proven for a few years that he can score goals and create goals, so why would you not involve him? Best player in the championship is the consistent view, whenever I speak to him, of uh, Gary Megson, former Wednesday manager, um, who, who rates him highly, not just for his skill and his talent, his flair, but the fact that he works so hard on the field, he's prepared to get back and tackle as well. So why is it, why is it not, why has he flittered or flickered, you know, for the last few years and not produced? consistently his best form, do you think? Any thoughts on that? I'm not sure. Sometimes players go through sort of peaks and troughs of form and perhaps it's been a little bit stop-start with him. I know he's, he's been sent off a couple of times as well and I don't think that, that helps. He's either been um, sent off or injured or something, you know, yeah, sometimes, disrupted. Sometimes players just can't get can't get going and can't get that, that consistency of a run of games. Um, mm. So hopefully, he can, for Sheffield Wednesday's point of view, he can he can get that run of games and get that consistency, and then hopefully bring bring goals and assists to to the team. Any memories of playing against him in particular? Yeah, um, mainly for I think it was the first game of the season a couple of years ago at Preston. Um, I think um, <laughs> he didn't really enjoy his enjoy his afternoon that afternoon. Was I think. Sent off that day. No, um, he was what sent was off it? in the in the home game for Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. I think. Him and Ben Pearson. I think I've got a little bit of a, a rivalry going right. for playing against each other. So it's always a good battle when when them two come up against each other. Yeah. 
Um, his final season on contract as well, and I, I would think it's very important for him that he does show his best form. With, from that point of view, he's 29. You know what that's like, I suppose, as a player, you know, not towards the end of his career, but you just don't know how much longer it's going to go on. Yeah, I think we've seen it sort of in the past. Um, I think when players are either running the contract down or, or they're in the last year, they're, they're wanting to sort of prove a point to either get a further contract or, or to get a move somewhere else. But either way, for, for Sheffield Wednesday, it's, it's going to be a positive because he is got, going to want to sort of prove a point this year that, that he is the man and, and is, is the man for, for Sheffield Wednesday, hopefully. It's a powerful stimulus, I think. I detect in Gary Monk a, a, a real willingness to give this player his head. And, you know, why would you not? You know, you've got such a great talent there. If you can accommodate him in the right system and you can get the best out of him, it can make a huge difference, can't it? And what, to me, is perhaps not as formidable a championship this year. It's very compacted. You, uh, there's no sign of a runaway this year. Yeah, it's, um, I think, over the past sort of two, three years in particular, we've, we've seen sort of that one one or two, yeah. two teams sort of running away with it. Um, and like I say, I think this year's a lot more open and you could see teams such as sort of Preston North End or a Sheffield Wednesday or any, any one of that sort of top 14, 16 teams, <laughs> if anything, could, could put, put a run together and, and reach the playoffs. Who's the best of it? Uh, I reckon Fulham have got the, the most talented team. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that. There's a former teammate of yours in there as well, isn't there? Yeah, I've not, not actually seen them sort of live this year yet. Um, not, not, they're not uh, producing at the top. Anyway. No, but I think as the season will go on, like you alluded to, they've, they've got an array of talent, especially going forward. Um, and for me, Tom Kern is the, the best midfielder in the in the league, so when you've got, got players like that and you've got um, Knockart, Mitrovic, it's a formidable sort of front line that, that anybody will be sort of <laughs> not looking forward to playing against. No, when they're going full tilt, they will be very formidable. West Brom as well look good, but um, Jordan Rhodes, now there, there's the classic, we, we talk about foresty areas perhaps being enigmatic, uh, but Jordan Rhodes has gone from being a prolific scorer, and if, if you were looking for a player now, based on stats, as a striker to score you goals in the championship, you wouldn't look any further than that guy on his record, would you? And yet for a couple of years, it's completely stalled. Any thoughts on that? Well, I was looking at each other, <laughs> and we were all scratching at it. I think um, he obviously got a few when he was um, at Norwich last season, he so... Did. You'd have hoped that that would have given him. I, I don't know whether it's confidence or you know just the feeling for for scoring again. But um, I think having time will be kind of the key thing. He's had a couple of appearances off the bench, and I just wonder if maybe he needs a bit more time to find that first goal. It's sort of the cliche that everyone talks about, like oh, once you've you know you've ended mm. that sort of drought. But um, he seems to be in all the right areas, and quite a lot of the time, you know. You can see the intentions there, and it's just not quite come off for him yet. Um, mm. So I think if Wednesday can, you know, if he can find it, find form again, it would be massive for, for Do Wednesday. Do you think he can still rekindle a career at where he is now at Sheffield Wednesday, Tommy? Without a doubt, for me, I've got nothing but but positive things to say about Jordan, um, both on and off the pitch. I think off the pitch is one of the nicest guys you'll you'll come across in in football. Um, and he does work really hard at his game as well on the training ground, sort of practices shooting every day. And I think maybe, like, like you alluded to, sort of a run of games may sort of prove the difference and getting that match sharpness, which is, as you know, is massively important to, to any player to have that sort of run of games. And I don't quite think he's, he's had that, but like you said, his record for scoring goals is unbelievable. It's phenomenal. He scored loads for you at Blackburn alongside Rudy Gestead and there's that thought mm -hmm. that he might need a big man to play alongside but Wednesday have got big men in Fletcher and in, in Nuhu so, and it's not happened then either so you, you, you do wonder whether it's a case of earlier delivery? I don't know. I don't so, know. I think I've had this sort of debate with a couple of people before and I think sort of they said oh when he's left Blackburn he's not scored many goals and but he played in a one up front at Middlesbrough and 
got them 10 goals from January and got them promoted. That's very interesting. That's the end of part one. I'm sorry to end it on such an interesting uh, spot. Uh, There's a video in part two. Can we join (laughs) us in five?